Well, good morning to all of you. It's great to be alive. Great to be in the house of the Lord. Great to be with, with all of you. And even all of those out there that I can't see. Welcome you into, into our service. My message this morning is uh, a place to meet again. Uh, I've used uh, Luke uh, chapter 15 verses 1 through 3 and 11 through 32 as well as uh, Galatians chapter 5 verses 19 through 26. You know, when you read those uh, portions of Scripture, it's an old story. Uh, two brothers won't talk to one another. Uh, one is a skid row bum. The other is a self-made success in business. Uh, each sees the faults of the other. The elder, who is rich and successful, sees his younger brother as a disgrace to the family, who has wasted his money and his life on uh, lustful self-indulgence. The younger, now on Skid Row, sees his older brother as uh, a self-righteous uh, snob. Uh, they'd worked together for a year, uh, but couldn't stand uh, feeling put down at every turn. And, uh, so the younger the son took his money out of the business and ventured out on his own. Now he blames his brother for driving him into the arms of explosive uh, men and women uh, who have led him to squander his wealth and his life. It's been years now since they've talked to one another. In fact, they haven't even thought kindly of one another. It's an old story that uh, has echoes in many of our families and really in all of our hearts. We all know the resentments we feel over failures, uh, so we, we blame that on others. We, we know the disgust with others who believe uh, uh, that uh, they failed us, even disgraced us. It's an old story of separation between brothers and sisters, parents and children, husbands and wives, people who once were old friends or co-workers uh, now separated from one another. And on top of that, there's uh, our attitudes towards people of different races or, or classes or, or groups uh, with whom we wish to have nothing to do. Usually in these kind of situations, uh, we excuse ourselves and blame others. We're in the right, and they're in the wrong. We don't want it this way, but then there's nothing we can do about it. Or maybe in spite of our stubbornness we do want it this way and nobody is going to change us so it's an old story of separation resentment bitterness people blaming and despising one another and into the midst of all of this steps jesus coming to us this morning tell us a story, a story about two brothers who were separated uh, from one another. At first glance, it, it looks like a, a, 
a story of a bad boy who left home and a good boy who stayed home. But if we look at it more closely, it seems clear that uh, neither has a monopoly on either vice or virtue. It's not that one is sinful while the other is righteous. These brothers are really two of a kind. They're both sinful. Only the form is different. The younger is self-indulgent, the elder is self-righteous. The younger is a self-indulgent uh, playboy who has wasted life and money and carelessness and dissipation. While the elder is a self-righteous snob uh, whose conceit may have driven his brother away and now refuses to take him back. Well, we don't need to try to figure out who's the, who's the greater sinner of the two. But some of Jesus' words about prostitutes and Pharisees suggest that the elder is no less of a sinner than, than the younger. And the younger may somehow be uh, uh, somewhat of a... a mere receptive to uh, that to repentance if I can use that term the elder son is like uh, like the Pharisees uh, in his pride and self-righteousness the younger is like the the prostitutes with whom he's accused of wasting his life so with Jesus uh, then speak to the elder brother as he did to the Pharisees. Remember what he said? The prostitutes will go into the kingdom of heaven before you. And what he say to the younger, uh, what he had said to the woman uh, taken in adultery, go and sin no more. I don't know exactly what Jesus would say to each of these brothers nor what he seeks to say to us in similar circumstances. But this much seems very clear. He rejects both self-indulgence and self-righteousness, but at the same time provides a place for both the self-indulgent and the self-righteous to come together and to meet again. So how could these brothers have met again? Should the elder have left home to meet his brother at a brothel where they could have wasted their lives together? Should the younger uh, have come home to strive to excel uh, his brother in self-righteousness and conceit? I think Jesus suggests something different than that. Neither is like to be is to be like the other. They're both wrong. Both wrong. Each one is in need of a new beginning and a new life. And that possibility, of course, is open to, to anyone. They share a common sinfulness, but uh, they also share something more. They're both sons of a loving father who cares for one as much as he cares for the other. As he went out down the road to welcome home his younger son, he also went again out into the field to invite his elder son to come home. <clears throat> so there's a place where these alienated brothers can, uh, can meet again. They can meet in their father's house where they share the embrace of his mercy and love. And in that mercy, they're equally loved 
and equally forgiven. Each has his own sins to confess and neither has need to confess the sins of the other. Neither becomes like the other. Each is changed into a new person, new in the awareness of being loved and being in need of forgiveness, new in awareness of being not only a son, but also a brother. You know, all of our, all of our old stories in all of our lives, stories of separation. They're not always going to end in reconciliation. In fact, we don't even know how the story in our text ends. Did the elder brother come back home out of the field and, and take part in the fatted calf? We don't know. We don't know. But we have an opportunity to turn to Christ as a prodigal turned to his father. We find welcome and pardon in his grace. And then discover that even while God forgives, someone else will not. the way it is. But when we confess our sins and trust God's mercy to, uh, we often discover that confession is contagious. By his power, we can speak we can speak words requesting forgiveness, words that we never felt that we ourselves were capable of speaking. Strengthened by his, his strong love, we can write that letter that we put off writing for so long. Old grudges and old separations uh, need not haunt us to our graves. When we're in Christ, a, a new story awaits to unfold for each of us. Remember, the scripture says, if any person is in, is in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away, and behold, all things are new. So as we recall this parable, uh, and then think again of the, of the conflicts in our own life stories, uh, we may remember uh, how the Apostle Paul speaks of the conflict between the Jews and the Gentiles. In the epistle for today, he says that uh, for both Jews and Gentiles, the message is the same. It's the message of Christ. That message made it possible for the Jews and the Gentiles to meet again. One was not to give in or to be like the other. The solution to this conflict, said Paul, in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 15 and 16, was that Christ might create in himself one new man in the place of the two, so making peace and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, 
thereby bringing uh, the hostility to an end. He's our peace, said Paul, who has made us uh, both one. Both one. One new man in, in the place of the two. That's our hope in the, in, in the place of all of these uh, conflicts, separation. It's not that one might always give in to, to one another, uh, but that in Christ, each of us might uh, be changed, that we might meet in him. Well, I'm winding down. E each of us, each of us has an old story to tell. Some of us are more like the elder brother, some more like the younger. Uh, many of us are a strange mixture of both of them. We may condemn and envy at the same time. If we're like the Pharisees, uh, we might despise the prodigal and still secretly uh, desire the life that he lives. And if we're like the prodigal, we may judge the Pharisees while secretly envying their status and respectability. Hmm. Sinners that we all are, Scripture says, who will deliver us uh, from ourselves, from our forms of indulgence and self-righteous living? How can we begin a new life story uh, in which we can come together in, in spite of all the old stories our lives must tell? Thanks be to God who in Christ welcomes us all, as ugly as we may be, as sinful as may be. So in Christ, we can welcome one another as Christ has welcomed us. Romans chapter 15, verse 7. These words are not just a highest platitudes. They witness that something witness to something that, that can and in many ways does happen every day. Those two brothers uh, that uh, we thought about in the beginning, one on skid row, the other a successful businessman. Each one has enough sin of his own to confess without confirming his brother's sins. And in Christ, there's grace enough for both. Because in Christ, they can meet again, each a new person transformed out of the old. Father, thank you, Lord, for, for this message this morning. Uh, we know, Lord, uh, how sinful and how corrupt we can be, God. But uh, we also know that there's uh, light at the end of the tunnel, if I can use that term, Lord. That you're there to, to help us, to bring us through, Lord, in the midst of our battles and sinfulness in life. Bless us this day, Lord. Thank you for encouraging our hearts in Jesus' name.